So now let's uh, extend that formula Q equals MC delta T a little bit and consider the heat exchange between two objects and and we know what both of them are. So it's not just that, that this, it's just the surroundings. We actually know what the surrounding is and what the system is. So for instance, we've got 10 grams of water. Oh, sorry, it's 100 grams of water. 100.0 grams of water is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius. For, by what? From a piece of copper that's actually kind of hot. Well, or at least warm. So the question is going to be, um, You've got 100 grams of water, it's heat from this, this temperature, 25 to 28, from the heat derived from what mass of copper that's cooling from 50 degrees Celsius? We've got some warm copper at 50 degrees Celsius, we put it into some water, and there's a heat exchange between the two. Obviously, the copper, which is warmer at 50 degrees Celsius, as opposed to the 25 for the water, is going to lose heat to the water, which is going to gain heat. So the system is the copper, and the surroundings is the water. Now, of course, the surroundings is water, but it's the entire environment around it. So what we have to do is we try, have to try to set up a kind of a, a condition, or if we're doing this as an investigation, where the heat exchange is kind of just concentrated between those two objects, and everything around the water is kind of sealed off from it. Well, that's called calorimetry. And what we do generally is that we would have, well, here's a really bad diagram for you, of... Okay, see that? That's a hunk of copper right there. Oh, we don't know the mass of that copper. It's just been placed into this water. Now, what's happening? Well, in this styrofoam container, and usually it's a double-nested styrofoam cup, because that does a good job of insulating, and we put a lid on that and a thermometer into that water, we know that the copper is going to lose heat to the water. So, in terms of this being an exothermic reaction, it's exothermic in terms of the copper, right, which is the system. It's losing heat to the water, which is the surroundings. Now, all the other surroundings is kind of kept out to the outside, and we're not going to involve it in the heat calculation here because the calorimeter, we hope, does a good job of insulating the rest of the environment from uh, the water and the copper. So, here's the thing. The copper is losing heat to the water, which is gaining heat in the calorimeter. So, um, how much copper is actually going to lose that heat to warm up the water from 25 to 28? What do we do? We set up heat loss equals heat gain. So here it is. Heat loss equals heat gain. The heat that's lost by the copper equals the heat that's gained by the water. Is the copper undergoing a temperature change? Yep. Is the water undergoing a temperature change? Yep. That's MC delta T equals MC delta T. So here is the expanded formula here for what's going on. MC delta T equals MC delta T, where this side is the copper, this side is the water. Now what's going to happen? Well, when we rearrange this formula here to solve for the mass of the copper, which is what the question is, what's the mass of the copper? The mass of the copper equals MC delta T divided by this C delta T. So it's the mass, specific heat capacity, and temperature of the water divided by the heat capacity, that's copper, and the temperature change of the copper. But we weren't given the temperature change of the copper. Well, yeah, we were. You just have to really be careful with questions like this and understand one simple principle. That if the temperature of the copper is going down and the water is going up, and I tell you that the final temperature of the water is 28, well, that's the final temperature of the copper too. So the point is, everything comes to something called thermal equilibrium. And when thermal equilibrium is achieved, there's just one final temperature. There might be initial temperatures of a bunch of different things, but they'll all come to thermal equilibrium, and they'll become, that will be the, the TF, or the final temperature for everything. So, here was the initial temperature of the water, and I'm subtracting that from the final temperature of the water. You get that change of three degrees there. Now, you're going to say, hey, chem guy, hang on a second. That was, that's the final minus initial, but this is the initial minus the, and I'm going to put the 28.0 degrees Celsius there. That's, it. that's initial minus final, final minus initial. Make up your mind. What is that going to be? No, 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 no. I ain't making up my mind. Here's the point. I always make these numbers positive. I don't care what the initial and the final is. I put the bigger number in front and the smaller number in behind because I make my temperature changes a positive number. I think that's very important because if you make one of these, switch it around and make it a negative, then you get, and I'm not kidding you, people do this, then they carry that negative through all the way through the calculations and they end up with a negative mass. Well, oh, because now we're talking about antimatter, are we? We're not talking about antimatter. So the point is, 
<laughs> what you got to do is just make the temperature change positive. Who cares about initial minus final or whatever? Just make it positive. Now, you do this math right here, and you're going to get the mass of the copper in the end, which is 148 grams. Uh, that's the three significant digits, by the way. So, 148 grams. Now, you say, well, you know what, though? That's, that sounds like, that's, that's, that sounds like a, 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 a kind of a, a large amount here because we, we had 100 grams of water, and, and the 100 grams of water only changed 3 degrees. But, but the copper here, it underwent a huge temperature change, and there's a large quantity of it. It, it kind of doesn't make sense to me. Well, no, no, it should, actually. Here's the thing. Remember that water's got a real high heat capacity. It's over 10 times as great here as the copper. So the copper, you're going to have to have a large mass of copper, and it's going to lose a lot of temperature, or a lot of heat. They don't lose temperature. It loses a lot of heat in order to be able to warm up, in a small way perhaps, a large quantity of water. I know that sounds kind of odd, but the point is it's all about heat capacities. Now, um, so that's how you would set up a question like this. Now, what happens though when your, your calorimeter here is not styrofoam, but it's another substance? Well, that question's coming up.